Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to talk about many of the enhancements that were made in Photoshop CS6 to the Layers panel. Now, I don't know about you, but I spend probably 90% of my time in the Layers panel, so all of these shortcuts are just fantastic additions, in my opinion. So the first one that we'll start with, um, it's actually a new panel, but it works in tandem with the Layers panel, and that's the Properties panel. And you'll notice that when I click on a layer, for example, here I'll click on a curves adjustment layer, the options for that panel appear right there in the properties panel. But what's really nice, because before we had the adjustments panel and we also, and it kind of had this dual toggle mode, and then we also had the masks panel, now we really just have the properties panel which will automatically swap out based on what you click on. So when I come down here to say a layer that has a photograph on it, I get the options for that. When I go over to the mask, I get the options for the mask panel. So for me, it's really convenient having all of the properties for whatever it is I'm clicking on right above that in the Layers panel. So I'm super excited about that. The other thing that's nice about the Properties panel is that you can actually make this as large as you want. So I can scoot this out and then we can click back on that Curves Adjustment layer and you can see how much larger that makes the curve so that I can make those really fine adjustments. Obviously on a bigger screen we would be able to see this even larger. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to double click on the properties panel just to close that for a minute. And let's go ahead and select a different layer. Now I'm going to click down here on this smart object layer because I want to show you another great addition and that is when you are transforming your images. Whether you're making them larger or smaller and whether or not you're using image size or free transform. Let me just show you when I do a command or control T there's now an interpolation option right here so that I can switch from maybe by cubic smoother to sharper or better yet, I can just set this to bicubic automatic and that way if I make the image larger, Photoshop will automatically choose the correct algorithm and if I make it smaller, it'll choose the correct algorithm. Now I'll escape out of here for a minute because I do want to go into the preferences and show you that this is also a, an application-wide preference here for image interpolation. So I've got mine set to the bicubic automatic. All right, since we were on the topic of smart objects, it used to be that when you were in the middle of transforming a smart object, the smart object itself, this icon on the layers panel, it disappeared and so it caused a little bit of confusion for um, customers. So now it's really nice when I'm free transforming, that icon just stays put. All right, I'll go ahead and escape out of there, but while we're talking about kind of visual feedback on the layers panel, I'll just point out that this layer right here has a new icon and that is the icon for the blend if sliders. So I just double clicked on it, that's how I got the layer styles dialog box. But you can see that I've made a change here to the underlying layer. And in previous versions, there was no real way to know, or certainly I was never remembering whether or not I had used these. So it's really nice to have that just visual clue right here. In addition, you'll notice like the layer underneath it, you can see that I've got it hidden. The eye icon is not toggled on, but if I click on that layer, it will actually show me the correct blend mode and opacity, which is really nice. Photoshop wouldn't have done that in the past. While we're on the topic of blend modes, let's just scroll down and say select these four layers right here. Well, I can now change not only the opacity for all of my selected layers, but also the blend mode for all of my selected layers at once. So I'll just undo that, but that's going to come in really handy. And while we're talking about making changes to multiple layers, you'll notice that I can lock multiple selected layers at once as well. And if I right mouse click on the eye icon, you'll notice that I can also change the color of multiple layers at once. Now one of the little things that's always bothered me in the last few versions once we were able to select multiple layers is that I could use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control J to duplicate a layer, but I couldn't use it to duplicate multiple layers or layer groups, but now I can. So for example, if I select these three layers right up here and I want to duplicate them, Command or Control J will duplicate all three at once. All right, let me undo that. I'll come down here to this group and again I can use Command or Control J and you can see now that I've duplicated that entire group with a single keystroke. So that's certainly going to save me some time. 
Now, as my layers panel gets more and more complicated, it, it becomes more difficult, especially on a small screen, to find the layers that I'm looking for. So you'll notice up here at the top of the layers panel, we can now search through all of our different layers. And there's a variety of different ways that you can search. I think probably one of the most effective ways is going to be by kind. So if I just want to see all of my pixel-based layers, I can quickly search and filter on them. Or if I just wanted to see adjustment layers, or any of my type layers, and look, that type layer was actually in a group that's not even visible, and yet Photoshop found it. Photoshop can also filter for my shape layers, and it can filter for any smart objects. So you can see that finding the exact layer I need is going to be much easier in Photoshop CS6. Okay, let's switch over to this next file, because I want to show you that you can now clip layers to a group. So I have a group here. It's just the three circles. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to duplicate this layer 0. So I'll use Command J to duplicate it. And then I'm going to reposition it on top of the group, outside of the group. But I want to display this copy. In fact, I want to display this copy at 100%, but only within those circles. So I want to clip layer 0 copy to the group. In order to do this, I'll hold down the Option or the Alt key and simply click in the lines between the two layers. And now I've got a single layer clipped to a group. And while they were making changes to groups, they also added the ability to apply a layer style to a group. So if I select the group, come down to the Effects icon, and want to add a stroke around each one of these circles, we can make this rather large just to make sure we can see it. And now you can see that that effect, I didn't have to apply it to each individual shape layer. I could simply apply it to the group itself. Now, as I add more effects and styles and groups, one of the nice things to be able to do would be able to close those all at once. So if you Option click on the Disclosure triangle here, you'll notice that it will toggle all of the effects throughout your entire document closed at one time. And if you're ever in the position where, when you're working with effects, like right down here, if you wanted to actually rasterize that effect into the layer, in previous versions of Photoshop, you could always right mouse click, and you could rasterize the layer style, but it would separate it out into maybe two or three layers. Now I can simply click Rasterize Layer Style, and Photoshop will go ahead and rasterize the style into the pixel-based document. So that's quite nice. There's fewer layers that I would have to manage that way. And finally, the last keyboard shortcut, I'll just move up to the next layer here. Um, you know, you could always, if you had the Move tool selected or any of these top six tools, you could tap the keyboard shortcut like 4 to get 40%, or you could type, you know, 5, 5 to get 55%. But there was actually no keyboard shortcut to get it to 0%. But now there is. You can tap 0 to get it to 100% or tap 0, 0 quickly to go ahead and decrease the opacity of the layer to 0%, basically hiding it but not having to use the eye icon to do so. So as you can see, there have been a ton of small enhancements made to the Layers panel, which is going to save me a ton of time and make me much more efficient in Photoshop CS6. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.